Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at OneElect. Today we're going to be looking at Azure NetApp files and how you can use this with virtual machines. We'll be doing Kubernetes in the future. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Azure NetApp files. So this is not something that I've covered in the past and I've done an entire series on Azure infrastructure as a service and this would really fit under that. But because I've been doing a little mini series on some of the new features available inside of blob storage and inside of file storage with NFS, I wanted to cover Azure NetApp files as another possible solution in this same vein. Now, Azure NetApp files is an enterprise grade NAS in the cloud. So NetApp files is itself a company that specializes in providing file storage and, and appliances that can be used to provide high performance storage on premise. Azure NetApp files is actually a first party offering on Azure. It is brokered by Microsoft. So it's not a marketplace item. It's actually a first party offering on Azure, but it is a partnership with NetApp to provide an enterprise grade file storage mechanism on Azure. And Azure files does a great job for a lot of things. And blob storage does a great job for a lot of things, but Azure NetApp files can provide an enterprise grade solution that will have a lot of features that aren't available in some of the more traditional or classic ways of storing files and data on Azure. So I wanted to show you this technology today. We will get to the Kubernetes implications for Azure NetApp files, as well as using NFS with blob storage and using it with app uh, Azure files as well. But I wanted to cover this first and talk through it and show you how to set it up. And once we get it all set up, then we will look at Kubernetes in our next video where you can use NFS and other storage drivers to access data that are stored in any number of these various kinds of storage options on Azure. Setting up Azure NetApp files is a two part process. The first thing that you have to do is actually request access to it. Now, once you to do that, you need to go to create a resource and then you will want to type in NetApp files and then search for this. It's going to should give you a list of options here. Azure NetApp files is the one you want to get. And then once you search for this, you need to create this resource. But before you can actually create this, I mean, I've already gone through this process. You have to go through the process of requesting this with the Azure NetApp files team, because it's not a generally available resource until you've been whitelisted with your subscription IDs. But once your subscription IDs have been added into the list, it'll light up inside of Azure and you can then create it. But until you do that, it you have to go through that manual process. So once you have it set up, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do then is give it a name and I'm gonna call it ANF uh, Blaze or something like that. And I was just pulling a VM there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to select a subscription. I've added it all to my subscriptions here. I'm added to this resource group I already have called NetApp and I'm just going to simply create this ANF instance. It takes a minute for this to work, so we'll come back when that's done. Once your NetApp files is created, your account that is, and you've been whitelisted, you can start creating resources. Now, this is the NetApp files account overview, and you'll see two top level resources available inside of your NetApp account here. And I have capacity pools and volumes. Capacity pools are reservations of storage on Azure. And so you have to create one of these first, and then you can carve that up into volumes. So we have to have the capacity pool created first. And once you have that, you can set up an, any number of volumes inside of that capacity pool. So let's go ahead and, and create a capacity pool here. Now I can add a pool. I can search for a pool right there if I wanted to. I'm gonna click on add a pool right here. I'm just gonna call it pool one. And the service level corresponds to the Azure storage underneath standard premium and ultra standards generally for general purpose type things. It doesn't have great throughput or great IOPS, but it will get you by for most workloads. Premium typically has better throughput and better IOPS and ultra has really good throughput and really good IOPS and also really low latency. So it's very good for demanding workloads that require uh, quick access to the storage. And so this would be the one for more like databases. And this one would be things for like websites and other types of uh, things like that. But in any case, we can uh, then go to uh, premium. Let's just choose that tier for now. And then you have to have a minimum of four terabytes. If I try to do one, it won't let me. It'll say it needs to be between four and 500. But per pool, you can have four to 500 terabytes. So I'm going to create a four terabyte premium service level pool 
I'm going to click create here and let that create. Now this happens usually pretty quickly. And once that's done, uh, then you can come over and create a volume. I'm going to come over here to volumes and add a volume. Now under the basics blade here, we just give it a name. So let's call it vol one for vol one here. And this one, you can specify small capacities. You can specify uh, large capacities up to the quota that you have available. So 100 is the smallest one you can use 100 gigabytes and up to four terabytes. And it's showing me that I have four terabytes available there. If I wanted to do one uh, terabyte, I would do 1024 gigabytes. And then I also need a virtual network to connect this to because this is a service that's intended to be used by enterpri enterprises. It's designed for connecting virtual machines to and services that run on virtual machines like Kubernetes. And what this allows you to do then is create a virtual network with a subnet that has a resource reservation for NetApps. And the, the service endpoint then will be exposed as an as a private IP on that given virtual network. So I have here a virtual network already created called NetApp VNet, and I, the default subnet on that is tagged for NetApp files in this case. So I'm simply going to use that one for this demo here. The next one is the blade where I can choose the protocol. Now, when we looked at blob storage, we had NFS available. When we looked at Azure files, we had SMB or NFS available. You couldn't do both. With Azure NetApp Files, you can actually do a dual protocol, NFS v3 and SMB. If you go this route, though, you can't use NFS v4.1 like you can here. So if I wanted to use NFS only, I can choose the protocol version, NFS v4.1 or NFS v3. However, if I wanted to use this dual protocol mode, it's going to default to NFS v3. Windows can use this through a third-party driver for NFS v4.1, uh, but it is a little kludgy as of right now. And it does, uh, Windows does have a built-in client for NFS v3. So if you didn't want to use SMB, you could definitely go this route uh, if you wanted to, or you could use SMB. Uh, use a dual protocol, NFS v3 and SMB, or you can just go straight up SMB, which of course Windows can read that natively and Linux can through SIFS drivers that are available for most distros as well. So you shouldn't really have any issues connecting Windows and Linux uh, clients to these, but it's pretty straightforward if you want to set up one of these for dual protocol or single protocol. I don't really know if there's a quote unquote best practice. But one thing that you will notice here is that Azure Active Directory is available for SMB because Azure NetApp files can integrate with Azure uh, Active Directory and use that to authenticate users against your SMB shares out of Azure NetApp files. I'm not gonna go into that today. I'm principally gonna be looking at just creating a volume with this. And you can use the dual protocol mode here if you want to, but I'm going to go with NFS v3 because I can do that rather easily in Windows and I can also do it very easily in Linux as well. Now, this would be one for relatively low security if you want to just rely on network security. If you wanted to have authentication and authorization, SMB would definitely be an option there. Now, with NFS, there's something called an export policy and this is basically a whitelist of IPs that are able to connect to the volume. So I'm just gonna whitelist everything, I do a slash zero that has anything on the internet that can, can connect to this. If I wanted to just do a particular subnet or, or a particular set of subnets, I can add all of that here. And then you can give access rights on this. And then you can give root access as well. Now, the reason you wanna do this for NFS is because there isn't any authentication and authorization. It's just principally relying on IP whitelist. And then you can assign based on whatever CIDR blocks, read write permissions uh, to that particular whitelist uh, IP addresses. But for Linux, this is probably good enough for things like Kubernetes or something like that, where you're gonna be running services against these shares. However, if you needed that integration and you wanted to use this for file sharing, of course, SMB would be the way to go in that case. And once you have that, you can tag it with resources. And then once you have that done, you can go over and hit create and then come back whenever your volume is done creating. Looks like my resource is done now. I'm gonna click on go to resource. And this is just gonna take me straight to the volume that I created. Now, what I have here is a overview of my volume that I created. It's gonna show me the quota and so on. Uh, what I can then do is come down here to mount instructions. 
and this will give me instructions for mounting this on Linux. Now this doesn't tell me how to do it on Windows and I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but mounting it on Linux is very straightforward with NFS. NFS, you pretty much just install a package and you run mount. It's not that much different on Windows though. You can simply install a client and then that will uh, then um, be installed on Windows and then you can run a mount command on Windows to create a share on Windows, essentially mount it to a drive and then it'll use NFS to communicate with the particular volume that you have here. Very straightforward. So let's go ahead and do this on Windows. You can see how to do it right here on Linux. Let's go over to Windows and see how you can do it there. Again, very straightforward, but most of this content is oriented around Azure Net Files. I just want to kind of give you a feel for how it works. Okay, I'm logged into my Windows box here that I have up on Azure, and I'm simply going to come over here to the control panel and let's open up this guy. This is a brand new install. And we're going to go to large icons and then come down here to programs and features and then click on turn off Windows features. And uh, then in this list, as soon as it populates, you'll see services for NFS. You can expand that, click client for NFS. And this is an NFS v3 client for Windows. So it'll get you up and running. So let's go ahead and get this installed. And whenever this is done, we can go back to the portal and get the credentials we need for this to work. Okay, I'm here on my Azure virtual machine. There's a couple of commands I need to run first and the I've already installed the client. So the next thing to do is run these PowerShell commands and I'll paste these into the video description down below. I've actually already run these on this box, so I might get an error by running this, but the property already exists. Yeah, it's because I've already run this. But if you run these for the first time, you won't get that error. You will basically uh, get a success code and it won't return this property already exists error. But in any case, what this does is it sets the, the GID and the UID for the mount command to use. And that's important because what is needed inside of a Linux context is the, who the U user's ID is, the UID, and who the group ID is. And that's how permissions are assigned at the Linux level. And this is basically saying use the root level user. And once you run this, reboot the machine, and then you will be able to run the next command, which is the mount command. I'm going to show you where I got this IP and volume from, but let's uh, reboot the machine and then we'll go from there. I'm back in the Azure portal now, and I'm looking at the volume that I want to mount. Now, the mount instructions give me the amount instructions for Linux, and you can follow these rather, rather easily if you have a Linux CLI up. However, I'm doing this on Windows. Now, to do this on Windows, I'm going to use this IP and volume from this particular command right here, and that's where I got that from. So let's pull back up my VM here, and I have the PowerShell session open. But I'm going to run this inside of a command prompt because for some reason that mount command isn't available in PowerShell. You probably could find it, but I don't have it set up at this point. In any case, that's what I'm getting right here. This last parameter right here is the drive letter. So to do that, I'm going to copy this and then launch CMD. And then I'm going to paste this in. And you should get a mount successful if you do that. Now, if I come over here. I should see a Y drive now that I have the ability to save files to. So if I come over here and save as to this particular file, I could save this to my Y drive now and then command.txt. And this just simply just allows me to you know, run files, save files and do all that. This is high performance storage though. So you're going to notice very little bit, very little lag in terms of what you're going to get out of these uh, mounts available from Azure NetApp files. So if you really need some high performance storage in whatever application context you're using, this would be the option to use, whether you're using NFS or SMB or a combination of both. This is a really good storage option. Now, next time we're going to be taking this into Kubernetes and looking at it there. So thanks for watching this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.